Okay. Today we, we come to the last active part of the uh, project sustainability uh, um, yeah, life cycle uh, stages, if you want, uh, for the project manager. And next week we, we look actually at where the research is going in sustainability. So I, I want to kind of uh, show you where the field has gone, what is happening actually in practice. So you can see a few case examples as well of how it has been used to kind of enhance project management. But uh, um, today we restart with monitoring, evaluation and assessment of sustainability actually. So if it works, the agenda is very much along those lines. So first of all, we look at sustainability monitoring. What is it actually? What does it mean? Then evaluation, the assessment of it. And last but not least, the indicators for sustainability on which we do the whole uh, charade. And then sustainability reporting. Is actually anybody doing this? Is anybody actually reporting on how they are actually performing against sustainability? So again, in terms of effort, yeah, this is again the PMI best practice guide. Where we are now kind of in the execution uh, while it's monitoring and controlling along, and uh, probably in the reporting is actually the aftermath. So uh, um, we would have as well the closing stage, actually as part of our game. Uh, um, so wh where do we arrive for that? So sustainability and monitoring. Uh, uh, first of all, what, what is monitoring? Um, for, well, we, we do it really to keep us on track of implementation process. So it's, it's kind of uh, the criteria that we are using to give us feedback if we are actually progressing, right? So this is involves as well watching the progress of the project against goals and deliverables. And we normally do so periodically, uh, checking uh, um, uh, uh, against the progress of work against uh, uh, targets. Yeah, and this is kind of the whole idea behind it. Uh, um, yeah, you can then look at, at a more refined uh, way of monitoring, but we will come to that uh, next. So sustainability and monitoring is kind of the overlap. So here we are monitoring for sustainability and development of the strategy for the sustainability monitoring from the core of project of program management. I hope that makes sense. So I read it one, one more time. So sustainability monitoring and development of a strategy for sustainability monitoring from the core of a project or a program management. Yeah. So this uh, um, entails uh, uh, um, commences from implementation stage. Yeah. Not all dimensions of sustainability will be revealed initially. So some actually are maybe unfolding as <coughs> activities become more explicit and you actually understand what's involved and important to monitor at regular intervals. So uh, um, I mean the, the most pragmatic format that I've seen more recently uh, with sustainability monitoring is uh, um, a lot of companies use the last planner approach. So they kind of go from week to week where there's a packages and if they recognize the activities in this week may be uh, um, worthwhile scrutinizing in terms of sustainability. They actually go into the week before you're starting and bring consultants on to assess it and, and uh, um, update basically the tools so they are functional for the actual delivery in the coming week. Yeah? But again, this is just one approach. Uh, um, oh, my formatting has swapped. Okay, but uh, um, so sustainable monitoring is expected to commence right from <coughs> the start of the implementation of a project. However, not all dimensions of the sustainability are uh, um, expected to reveal themselves at the early stage of the project. So for example, the economic or environmental dimensions of sustainability is expected to reveal themselves <coughs> at a more mature stage of a project, <coughs> say after six months to a year of operation of it. But continuous attention to a variety of other sustainability issues such as uh, institutional or, or logistics and community will help detection deviation, if any, at an early stage and ensure introduction of corrective measures ahead of time. So in, in a nutshell, monitoring of sustainability is a different game to monitoring quality performance, for example, against our criteria, because we our effects of sustainability are often not visibly during the production time. Yeah? So we are actually having here post 
project life cycle indicators of them, which makes sustainability a tricky thing to actually monitor. Yeah? But we, we can already probe here for indicators. That, does that make sense? Yeah? So with the social side, okay, this makes kind of sense already during the project delivery side. But when you come to environmental impact, you can just check for the quality, right? That, that something is sealed, that you're not like polluting uh, uh, neighboring environments. So th this is kind of input oriented rather than uh, output oriented, yeah? So um, steps in monitoring, and this is specifically uh, um, for, for sustainability. Uh, identify first of all different units involved in planning and implementation. Identify the items which uh, feedback is required as well. And then develop reporting medium, determine the kind of periodically uh, uh, of the reporting. Uh, then fix the responsibility of the reporting at different levels. And you want to have those, uh, um, the responsibility sitting as well with capable partners. So this can be even like a community service with environmental pollution. If you have a station that is actually kept, uh, um, keeping the data, or actually a good example uh, um, of social sustainability, is a recent Pula, uh, uh, Pulitzer Prize winner in America. He uh, uh, looked at uh, communal sustainability in the relationship between the police and the community in uh, um, America, particularly in uh, some areas around Detroit. And uh, he kind of uh, uh, made a community <coughs> watch, basically look at the interaction between police and potentially uh, um, racially uh, framed uh, um, interaction with police. Yeah? And he actually had a, a web page that he hosted where they kind of uh, documented with videos the interaction between police and uh, poten potential vulnerable groups. And he doc documented that consistently, geotagged, and uh, um, this was completely communal based. Yeah, so he didn't get any money for it. He made it out of interest. Similar things with the responsibility of environmental sustainability. Locals often are quite happy to be uh, a steward for that. Yeah, so uh, um, if, if you are, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I should just leave it with that. <coughs> if you're interested, there are some good examples in the literature as well. So once the res uh, um, responsibility is kind of given for the reporting as well, and this should go to the different levels that are actually affected by it, then you can uh, look at uh, processing and analyzing the reports against the, uh, um, what's desirable and identify as well potential dimensions for sustainability, and then identifying the critical and unreliable areas in implementation, and last but not least, providing feedback to corrective measures. So um, this can be, uh, in, in some cases, as I've identified, past the project implementation, which makes it a little bit uh, a hot potato for a project manager. But at the same time, it should be put in place so you have this contingency, yeah? so your projects are seen to perform in the right way. Now then we come to the sustainability evaluation, and this is really, uh, um, well, what, what is the difference? Uh, um, evaluation is finding the value of something, right? So assessment as to whether a project activity conforms uh, uh, to the standards that you actually set out, and then study and review uh, um, as well of post-operating experience. See actually if you arrived at what, what you wanted to get out of it. Um, So evaluating project results is helpful in providing answers to key questions like what progress has been made. So again, it gives you potentially uh, milestones that you are hitting, right? Uh, um, where the desired outcomes achieved, why? Uh, um, do the project results justify the project inputs? And are there ways that uh, um, project activities can be refined to achieve better outcomes? Uh, um, so this is normally the uh, traditional questions, uh, um, and the idea is really to, to work through that with both your team, maybe a sustainable consultant if you haven't done that by yourself, and as well your client and your community that is affected, yeah, your stakeholders. Um, so here are some of the uh, um, project environments in which you may actually uh, um, perform. So. Uh, um, 
so the big question here is exactly what are you evaluating? Uh, um, so and, and then as well exactly what success by the program you are evaluating would mean, and specifically what information do you have or, or could you get that would show how successful you have been? And again, here the important notion is be realistic. What resources do you actually have for evaluation? So this is well a recognition. I've seen great intents before in, in projects. Yeah, the Olympics uh, in London was a typical example. Great intentions for project legacy. If, if you actually speak to one of the project managers, they'll tell you we are not allowed to disclose this yet. But if you look at the independent reports uh, that have been published, they have failed pretty much on all legacy aims. And, well, there, there were a few. So the West Ham uh, football stadium has now been bought uh, um, as a football stadium from the Olympic organization. But even the infrastructure was actually not uh, durable enough uh, um, to last uh, long after. So la last year, when I was uh, on the Olympic Park, you could see that the pass came already off. They had like a surface that was falling apart. Yeah? So yeah. So if you are not evaluating for it, and they, they are a big organization, so it should be easy. But they are not evaluating for it. So nobody went back and uh, went actually. Uh, are there to actually uh, see if they achieve the values, so this has been just dismissed. So um, sometimes programs do a self-evaluation, and sometimes a uh, evaluator comes uh, from outside. So particular critical in like uh, um, projects where you may be seen as an agenda setting, then you may not want to uh, um, be the evaluator, but have an external company. So here again, if you want to frame it. What were the issues? So kind of with sub-questions. <coughs> Position audit is uh, at the top. What was the impact? Uh, is an, uh, um, actually, the uh, so here it's a realization activity. What is the project trying to do and how? And then you come to the impact analysis. What have we been, uh, um, what have been the results? Yeah, that is correct. So, and then uh, this is as well during the monitoring phase, and then position audit afterwards, what was the impact? And again, this kind of imports, uh, uh, um, informs the uh, uh, future projects, right? So it's kind of cyclical. So once you have the report of the past project, you can use it as a lessons learned tool for future projects, right? So we, we had that already uh, uh, in a far more sophisticated way in, uh, um, the knowledge management lecture, but uh, again, uh, um, this is a reminder. Yeah, evaluation tools. Well, uh, um, the traditional ones, and particularly if you go in the li literature, uh, um, I, I don't know why that is, but uh, there is a huge favoritism of deterministic uh, um, kind of tools. So the classics are checklists, uh, feedback uh, forms, uh, and then statistical reports, bespoke tools. Bespoke tools is even modeling. Yeah, so uh, um, you can even have a, a um, scenario model or, or complexity model uh, where you can kind of look at different uh, scenarios, how likely they are to impact. Um, then we come to kind of the sustainability assessment. Now here we are assessing how sustainable something is or the project is or, or our performance is. So here's a toolkit for direct feedback for us as well. So here, uh, um, dimension of difference, so uh, um, uh, assessment is kind of, uh, um, so in, in terms of content, timing, and uh, primary purpose, so an assessment is kind of an ongoing activity, whereas an evaluation is kind of final, so you're looking if you have kind of performed against your targets, uh, and, and here the assessment is really to see where you are, is this on target, and even defining if, if it's impacting on the output, yeah? so you, you have your playground. Then the orientation, focus of the measurement. Here you have the process orientation in the assessment, and evaluation uh, uh, on the other side is more product oriented. And when you come to the findings, uh, um, or, or the uses actually of the findings, um, so assessment is about uh, diagnostic, so identify areas for improvement, or, or see as well where you're doing well, and evaluation is, is more judgmental. So here you arrive at an overall result. Uh, um, and the judgments should come very clearly linked from the facts in the evaluation. But here you go as well with information where you may not have facts, uh, so where concerns are, so you would follow those up in the assessment. Yeah. A project assessment allows managers to assess a project progress against a range of indicators. It may inform the development of alternative strategies as well. So this is uh, uh, kind of the idea behind it, right? So what, what are the assessment tools? So the uh, Eco Compass tool is one. 
developed by the uh, um, Foundation Interior of Spain. It's one of the assessment tools that can be used geographically representing uh, um, improvements made in process and product design. So they, they basically define six key indicators, intensity of raw material use, so including water. Uh, be, be careful when we talked about reporting dashboards. Yeah, uh, um, clearly separate where you're kind of uh, reporting and how well you're doing because you have saved more water or you have uh, um, maybe reduced CO2 consumption. So the reporting, those would be, of course, uh, planned would be once lower and once higher, right? So separate those clearly and indicate what is good and what is bad. And because if you have a quick look at the dashboard, you, you may actually miss a point. Uh, so, but uh, again, coming back to it, um, the intensity of raw material use, so this could be including water, intensity of energy consumption, so again, you see we, we have reduction targets here, right? Then generation of liquid, uh, solid, and uh, air emissions. Um, did, did we talk about that? What, what are emissions? Is emission just CO2? Yeah, no, no, was the right answer? Yeah. So it, it, this, this could be anything where we produce emissions. So emissions is a waste product, right, that goes into the atmosphere and has po potentially harming uh, um, effect if it comes to a certain quantity. Yeah. It's actually air density normally that uh, if you look scientifically at it, uh, and there are some that are reactive for, that you really don't want to have. Uh, um, yeah. But emissions is just a side product from whatever you're doing, right? Uh, um, then efficiency in transportation of the product, uh, um, then content, uh, or actually the up absence maybe of uh, transportation, yeah? so this, this could be as well a target. Then uh, content of uh, toxic substance in the product and durability and functionality of the product or, or service. But you notice those are categories and you kind of have to go into it to really see if, if uh, um, your product or service actually uh, enacts with that. So a lot of products or, or aggregates are of course standardized. So they come kind of with, okay, we have toxic levels that go at that range, but uh, depending on your environment, uh, um, did you know the chestnut with a, a cigarette? Uh, um, so, uh, um, what does, uh, has anybody done that as a school project? How many uh, cigarette filters of smoked cigarettes do you need to uh, poison a cubic meter of water that is actually toxic? Huh? Ah, you don't have, uh, it's a pity, uh, that's a biology teacher that normally embraces crazy ex uh, exercises like that. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's not many, it's one. Yeah? So, uh, um, and if you dissolve it in, in the water, then uh, you, you have a toxicity level that uh, water supply companies would get fined for from the state yeah, in, in many countries. So this is, uh, the, this is a dilemma, yeah? So, but uh, again, so uh, um, the, uh, it's, it's uh, uh, often a hidden aspect. Yeah? So, uh, um, <coughs> yeah, assessment tools. So I, I've mixed here a, a few. Uh, this is really kind of looking at construction to give you an example. Uh, uh, I don't know why I did this, because in the end, uh, uh, sustainability uh, uh, is actually not uh, uh, really uh, taught in the uh, construction only program. But uh, um, in construction, we have actually frameworks that kind of specify criteria of how to evaluate it. So BRIM is kind of the UK version. Then we have LEED, which is the American uh, version. Then you, you have uh, Green Star. Uh, I mean, we could go on, in, in the, which is really funny and confusing to many people, is uh, um, it's BBC in France uh, uh, and uh, Passive House in Germany, yeah, that, that has kind of uh, a similar codes for sustainable homes. And then Caspi was another one, uh, there was a new one, uh, I've forgotten it, that had a ridiculous accurate that you couldn't use in English. But uh, will come probably back at the most inappropriate time. But so th there are some assessment tools that are normally developed for industries that try to strive towards uh, improving. So make sure that uh, you, you have as well a look. When you uh, um, start working in an industry, uh, have a look. There, there will be very likely uh, assessment tools around. Uh, I, I know as well that there was a similar incentive in aerospace and uh, the supply chain of uh, um, think machine producers or something like that. Uh, they, they are reporting now as well which metals and processes they are using. 
Yeah, but uh, um, this is very specific. Uh, um, so what, what, what could that then look like, the assessment tools? Well, you can kind of uh, um, put it in a dashboard. Uh, this is uh, one way of visualizing it. So uh, um, here it's really looking at maybe how well you are doing in terms of per performance, energy. Uh, what is H and W? Does anybody know? It's normally an H and S. I mean, the, the key is really this corresponds, right? So it's this one, right? But uh, um, so the, the idea is here you have kind of a tool, a spider diagram that, that kind of gives you the overview, how you're doing. And then here you may have your benchmarks, right? So you can work here as well with planned versus actual. But often in the reduction targets, you're just re uh, um, uh, reporting and how much you, you have saved, yeah? Or, or how much you have been able to reduce. And then you can even break it down. So here's CO2 emissions, and so they have individual criteria. This is a, a, a public, uh, um, pub, uh, private finance initiative, so PFI, but uh, um, this was actually for a big uh, infrastructure development in North Shields. Yeah. Yeah. So and <coughs> then you can see the uh, um, different aspects that they have measured. Yeah. Um, another tool uh, which is very commonly used is kind of earned value uh, um, management and here adapted already to earned environmental value management. So this is really uh, to uh, um, help mostly the project manager to stay on track, right? So you, you have kind of the planned value, earned value, actual uh, cost against it. And you know, then you can as well justify maybe uh, increased value with uh, uh, increased uh, um, uh, uh, um, cost, for example, yeah, if it's actually desirable for the client or the stakeholders, yeah. So, uh, um, yeah, normally uh, used for the project manager to kind of measure a uh, project performance. Yeah, it's it's uh, we we had that in the other session. Be be uh, warned, earned value has a bias level. Yeah, it depends when you're measuring. Yeah, so it it can be a small change uh, uh, as a day. Yeah, just doing the accountancy of a project that that may be nearly completed as completed. Yeah, can make a big difference, or as well activity, a work package yeah, that, that has not yet been completed, but you can see it there. Yeah? Yeah, it's very tempting to already fully account against, which actually really uh, uh, changes the value in the uh, illustration, right? So it's the old accountancy uh, joke. Yeah? Uh, and, and being that uh, three quarters of a plane is not yet a plane, yeah? you can't fly it. Yeah? Uh, um, it is a, a systematic project management process used to uh, find as well variances in project based <coughs> on the comparison of work performed and work planned. So here the earned value management is used on the cost and schedule control and can be very useful in project forecasting. Um, it's largely a quantitative uh, process, of course, and uh, largely for uh, consideration as information for decision making, right? So you still have to look what the in indicators are. You can do a, a similar uh, thing with the environmental uh, um, side by actually looking how your impacts may create additional uh, cleaning costs or maybe fines from governments you know, that you can avoid. So you could as well, we, we had that two sessions ago, right, uh, where we looked how environmental value can be as well sustaining business opportunity by not having uh, to pay any charges or fees for governments uh, um, that, that basically fine us for having polluted something. Yeah. So often that outweighs uh, um, the better sealing layer so that uh, you don't have liquid uh, leakages from uh, uh, liquids that you don't want to have in the grounds uh, or other activities. Uh, again, I'm thinking of one pragmatic uh, example, but there are of course multiple aspe uh, aspects of that that you may want to consider. Yeah. Um, challenges are uh, very uh, simple, so uh, getting the commitment to do it really, this is one of the key challenges. Uh, um, then establishing baseline, well, f first of all, before we talk about uh, monitoring, evaluation and assessment, you, you have to, uh, uh, how, how do you feel? Did you, have you heard a lot about sustainability, the government projects, that uh, um, Green Deal? Has anybody measured this? This is a UK thing, or have you heard in, in Anywhere else, how, how sustainability was reported on? Has anybody heard anything? So 
So in, in the UK, we are very bad. Because uh, um, one, one thing is very clear in the UK, once we have planned these uh, monitoring activities and evaluation and assessment of sustainability, we realize as well that there are costs attached. And after the project is completed, that is a very simple thing to just cross out and save costs. Uh, so actually in the UK, we have said repeatedly, the Green Deal was never followed up if they actually achieve the uh, value that it strives to create, if they actually had the more sustainable performance, if the energy use was actually improving. So there, there's a big question if that is actually the case. Yeah, so getting the commitment to do it and following it through is one of the biggest challenges for us here with this. Yeah? So establishing a baseline at the beginning of the project, then as well identifying realistic quantitative and uh, qualitative indicators. Yeah? So that may be as well a perceived value. Yeah? So you can really kind of uh, um, get into trouble with, a, uh, um, with your local community if they perceive you're poisoning their ground. If you are not measuring, if you cannot show that actually, hey, we are measuring, the, the pollution hasn't increased with what we are doing, and actually we are managing very tightly our waste management yeah, or, or our pollution, then uh, um, you, you often have a problem. Yeah? You, you may be just perceived as, as polluting, although you're doing a great job. So it makes sense to have actually as well qualitative indicators to feel how people feel about it or, or see what they actually think about it, what their perspective is. Yeah? Uh, um, uh, then so it's well if, uh, a plan basically and uh, finding the time to do it and sticking to it and getting feedback from your stakeholders as well and reporting back to your stakeholders and uh, um, this may be uh, um, depending on where your project is uh, um, a shift of stakeholders right so once you hand your project over for uh, um, running it or operating it you may have a shift in stakeholders yeah so this contingency has to be planned in yeah. So yeah, th that is a, a warning challenge yeah, that, that comes with it. And uh, yeah, what, what do we actually measure in those wonderful scenarios? And, and what can we look at? Or what can we use as indicators? So what are the sustainable indicators? But well, there are a few things. So first of all, what is an indicator? Uh, um, well, what is an indicator to you? What is a good one? Do you, do you like scientific ones or? or do you like more soft ones or what, what is a typical indicator? No, no indicators? GDP? GDP? Yeah, yeah. G GDP? What, what is that? Uh, uh. GDP? Purchasing power. It's indicator for me. Yeah, so uh, what, what is that indicating? Or, or what, what is it indicating? Economic performance of a country. Yeah, so GDP is a, a very typical one yeah, for economic. Uh, uh, and we use it to benchmark, right? Yeah. We're quite cool with this. So what, what is your GDP? And then you, you look, oh, your GDP is not so high. And then, uh, um, you know, the other country says, like, I have a better GDP. Yeah, so I'm performing better economically. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, so let's go with the GDP. What, what is it accounting for? Gross domestic product, yeah. So it means how, how much we are consuming and doing, yeah? Is that correct? Or I think the GDP itself is not really an indicator. Yeah. Is that, that's why I said GDP. Normally yeah. we measure per capita. Yeah, yeah. Chasing poverty, power. Yeah. Then it's indicator because we can actually compare the number of people living or residing in the country. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, you would see that uh, this is a wealth indicator, though, right? So or, or access to resources, right? Uh, not really. It's about it's, uh, it's measuring by imports and exports. It's a gross domestic product. I mean, economic mm -hmm. performance. How much revenue do you keep in your economy? Mm -hmm. How much do you generate? Yeah. So th this can be positive as well as negative. Yeah. So this could be uh, uh, if we. Mostly positive. <laughs> yeah, no, no, not really. You don't want your GDP go up because people get more ill and consume more drugs, right? So this is a nightmare then. So the, you, you have uh, there as well directionality. So, uh, um, but you, you're right, yeah? So mostly it's, it's a, a um, gaming game, yeah? And uh, um, so there are hidden uh, dimensions. So arguably, if we produce cars, the more we sell, yeah, uh, the, the more our cars are popular around the world, 
this, this would be really good for us, right? So then our GDP is actually growing. And uh, as well, if, if we can then afford from the income to buy our own house, you know, that there's a regeneration of the wealth uh, actually in, in terms of, yeah, hand, handover. Yeah, so I'm not sure that then I'm describing it right. But you, so there, there as well uh, um, other targets that just show product consumption. So there's still a neutrality. It just shows us that our consumption is increasing, right? Arguably. Yeah. 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 Other, what what is the indicator maybe on project level, or what could we have there? Do, do we use indicators at project level? Yeah. Earned value, as you mentioned. Yeah, earned value could be one. Yeah. And and what what do we look at? Uh, we compare the economic performance against the plan. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so this could be based on the cost, so how much we have spent uh, um, against uh, activity of value that has been already in packages being delivered. Yeah, so, very, very good. Yeah. Yeah, so here I have as well a few uh, other ones. So uh, it can be as simple as measuring temperature. So those are physical indicators. Uh, um, uh, um, yeah, but in a nutshell, uh, um, it's an instrument which gives you information, and we measure what uh, value and value uh, uh, what we measure. So uh, that's all chestnut. Yeah? But uh, um, so the, the point is basically, uh, uh, it's in the criteria that you're defining that you're using as indicator, as what you get feedback on basically. Yeah. So what what are the types of indicators? So we have direct indicators, uh, um, which de refer directly to the subject they have been uh, developed for. So these indicators directly pinpoint at the subject of the interest. This is often the case with operational or more technical subjects. Uh, what the manager wants to know can be measured directly. The amount of GHG emitted at the result of uh, project activities or a reduction in travel distance. Yeah, so things like this are actually quite easily uh, are counted against, right? Um, as a direct, uh, what would be a direct indicator for sustainability? What, what do you think? Is there one that we could measure ourselves on? Yeah, um, what about the point of view projects versus time consumed? Yeah, yeah. So th this would so our iron tri triangle, right? So as an indicating tool as, as how we are performing, yeah. yeah. And in, in terms of sustainability, uh, um, in, in terms of energy, it might be yeah. uh, CO2 grams per kilowatt hour or something. Yeah, okay, this is already refined. Yeah, I, I like already. So yeah, I would have been already happy with energy, yeah, but you're spot on. Yeah, so this could be uh, um, a square carbon footprint combination mm -hmm. yeah, uh, uh, against the uh, actual energy use. Uh, although this, this may be tricky, yeah, so you, you need to work here closely with your <coughs> energy provider. Yeah, and uh, um, you, you could look at it as a personal level, how big your uh, carbon footprint is, right? So we have the uh, evaluation tool. It's very basic, yeah, but uh, it asks you how much you're traveling, where you're living, where you're working, then it gives you a rough estimate. Yeah, so something like this could be a kind of an indicator versus the actual ways you're traveling. Yeah. Um, yeah okay, but uh, um, this is already uh, um, kind of going in that direction. And then we, we have the indirect indicators. So here you, you have uh, uh, or uh, proxy indicators is often what they are called. So it refers indirect way to the subject of interest. There can be several reasons to formulate indirect uh, um, <coughs> indicators. The subject of interest cannot be measured directly. So uh, qualitative uh, um, subjects like behavior change, uh, living conditions, uh, good governance, maybe perspectives or reaction to, to understand something, right? So this, this is a typical one. Um, so the subject of analysis can be measured directly, but it is too sensitive to do so. This is another typical example. It has anybody experienced this? Uh, a subject of analysis can be measured directly, but uh, uh, it's too sensitive to do so, or you, you get no response, or, or people will probably try to manipulate it. What, what could that be? Uh, are we measuring the right thing then? What, what, what could that be? Is there something that comes to mind?
Uh, if you if you think a little bit political, what what could be <coughs> inhabiting? Why why would you not want to have a certain indicator? Yeah. It's some, something they don't like actually. You yeah. know where they fight ag against it, and you know show some negative aspects of the world that they're doing something wrong, and yeah. you know then people like the <coughs> strong, strong interests. You know, yeah. feel personally against them. Yeah. So you you may have uh, the situation where uh, a team has a certain working habit that really kind of uh, is, is one of their favorite <coughs> things. But it's uh, uh, one of the elements that you are measuring. It's actually considering this uh, uh, ineffective or an indication for undesirable behavior. Yeah, then it's very likely that people will not report honestly on that yeah, or, or try to hide it. Yeah, so then it's better to, to think about uh, um, an indirect way to kind of make that maybe a, a topic of revisit. Yeah? Uh, the use of an indirect indicator can be as well more cost effective than the use of a direct one. Uh, so that means as well uh, potentially uh, um, different uh, uh, routes. And increase in natural daylight. In, uh, so this could be increase in natural daylight in the building design, improvement, of in, uh, um, improvement in occupational health, actually, or number of local employees, contribution uh, to the local economy. This could be another indicator, but those those were two examples from uh, two papers, really. Yeah. Now then, you have as well uh, um, uh, sustainability indicators. So here, I've just listed a few from different uh, uh, papers and journals and, and uh, agencies. So uh, um, I've tried to kind of overlap them a little bit where where possible. So you can kind of see, uh, well, actually, I talk you through it. So you have here sustainability, which is a, uh, um, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, presented as a web page, but it's a charity. Then you have a global reporting initiative, and then you have the environmental uh, sustainability index. Again, uh, I've kind of listed for you all the organizations uh, um, in the previous uh, slides as well. And then uh, figured uh, they, they have done their own study, which is kind of uh, um, as well working closely together with our environmental agency here in the UK. So uh, um, they have approaches slightly different. Uh, um, so on one scale, you can see kind of the ethics, values, and principles, and accountability, commitment, and, and they kind of go along uh, a focus on environmental products, social economic development, human rights. And then with the global reporting uh, incentive, you, you go a little bit uh, the other way around. So you start by materials, energy, use, and water. Uh, um, then biodiversity, emissions, effluence, uh, um, and, and waste. Uh, effluence is as well liquid, so you know pollution and water, if you want. Then uh, emissions. Uh, yeah, sorry, I said suppliers themselves, how well they are performing, products and services. So you can see <coughs> this is kind of end at companies, uh, um, and, and they have here as well things like child labor, which is tricky, by the way. Did, did you know that Northumbria had child labor? And I didn't even realize that we actually qualified on that. So it turns out the placements that we do with the schools, where school children come here and use our laboratories for three weeks a year as an internship, that, that is actually unpaid labor. And we didn't realize that. So, uh, so <laughs> there was unpaid labor and uh, um, underage labor. So uh, yeah. Did you stop it? We did. Did you stop it? Yes, we, we have. Uh, uh, it's really cost me personally a lot of pain because I have from France. Uh, we, we work together with uh, SEDI, and they have uh, um, students that have not yet worked that are under 21, and this even that goes into child labor. So if they have no work experience, so I basically couldn't accept them for internships anymore. And in the end, I kind of uh, um, work now with a company where we can pay the minimum pay. So this was actually a bonus for them, but I, I can only take now one per summer. And in the past, I had like five students over the summer. So but yeah, there, there you go. Uh, um, so we, we changed it actually, and I have to sign a lot of contracts that I'm not exploiting them. And that I, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But uh, um, then yeah, uh, with the environmental sustainability index, you can see again this is quite hard. Uh, um, uh, uh, indices uh, um, and uh, actually they're a lot more refined so this one is actually quite sophisticated uh, um, similar like here biodiversity they have multiple uh, factors again that you have to assess uh, um, your, your particular project against and as well land use they have multiple more 
that are actually coming into that. Uh, with figure, they, they had to have a very similar idea. So again, here at the beginning, emissions, waste, materials, energy, intensity, noise, and vibrations. So this is actually a, a tricky one, right? Because uh, distance matters in Sandy. So you normally have a reference where you would measure that. Uh, waste heat is a, another one. So uh, radiation, uh, direct. So they have the interventions on nature and landscape, direct, indirect, internal stakeholders. Yeah? So they recognize here, yeah, maybe we have to ask people about it. Perception as well. They're direct and indirect as well. Stakeholders in the value chain. And then as they have even broken it down to community and society. Yeah, so that, that was a little bit uh, um, more action oriented. This is why I figure made it basically into this table. But you, 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 you get a feeling that they kind of aim at the same ideas, right? <coughs> the company setting its training and education <coughs> in uh, um, the more social setting, its involvement and understanding. Yeah? So it's quite interesting how this has been termed. Now, if, if you then run off and operationalize it, so this is again from the example that uh, um, uh, Alex and I did. Uh, um, so actually, I say uh, Alex and I. So this is uh, um, a template from his PhD. And we just run that basically with a North Tyneside Council as an evaluation tool. Uh, um, and it was we, we, are, we were not popular with the main contractors, to say the least. So here we had things like CO2 emission, design and develop uh, a building that minimizes carbon dioxide emissions. And then we had, for example, space heating, energy demand, uh, residential area. So there was a communal project and then space heating, energy demand, whole building. So kind of breaking it down. And then last but not least, the building fabric. So just to give you some examples. And here we went uh, with very, well, this is very building physics. So you have kind of models that allow you to uh, um, evaluate that very directly. But again, this is just one tool. So the other indices use the relevant ones basically to your project, right? So this is a key. Um, yeah, then we, we have as well more recently, well, this is actually one of the uh, um, uh, ones that I listed. So this is the global environmental indicators. It was a kind of second row. And here you can see how they have broken that down. So this is again, energy, atmosphere, biodiversity, and then within that, you have actually different criteria. So if you actually go in their model, it's a lot more refined. Ocean depletion, forest, uh, um, uh, fresh water, oceans itself, and then the governance actually. And here again, the indicators that are worsening and data are available to indicators that are improving. Uh, so uh, it's an interesting tool, and they give you as well kind of an overlook up front. Yeah? Yeah, and uh, um, basically, this wonderful circle shows you where uh, um, we actually have gone in the past, right? So this is a kind of review from 1990 to 2005. So it's a little bit outdated, well, 10, 11 years. But uh, um, you can see where we get a lot worse. So uh, atmosphere, we are getting worse. And then as well, uh, um, yeah, kind of forest is a little bit critical. Oceans itself gets uh, kind of critical. And then you, you have kind of the other elements where, where it may actually even improve. Yeah. Now with the, I always have said in the session, right, that, that somebody makes the most of con construction tools. Okay, so I, I will try to talk over it. So the indicators for sustainability you, you have to really kind of assess them against your project context. Yeah? So they want to be relevant and meaningful with respect to the environment, uh, uh, environment and health and welfare. Uh, um, inform as well decision making to improve the performance of the organization and recognize the inherent diversity of business. Um, by, by the way, on, on this one, I always receive questions from a few people <coughs> that have a very narrow view of the organization. So informed decision making to improve the performance of the organization. I had before that, oh, but uh, um, the additional indicators kind of make my project more expensive. But then if you look at the long-term cost of maybe a spill in uh, effluent into the local drainage system that uh, uh, may be used for drinking water and people having poisoning uh, uh, aspects in, in terms of health or well-being, then of course, if that comes back to you, your brand is burned and you probably have to compensate uh, on those cases. Uh, so 
this is really kind of for more holistic decision making. Yeah. So initially, that can be challenging. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Recognize as well the inherent diversity of business. Then support benchmarking and monitoring over time. So uh, this this is as well a powerful tool to kind of not fatigue you. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, um, so if if you have uh, targets that are not achievable, it kind of brings your initial benchmark down to a level that is achievable, and then you can grow from there, right? So so that you're not basically uh, outperforming yourself economically. Then uh, be clearly defined, measurable, transparent, and verifiable, uh, um, if, if possible, of course. Yeah. And be understandable, meaningful to the identified stakeholders. This was again my joke about. Uh, um, showing a banker detailed plans of a, a um, power plant is, is not necessarily uh, the best idea unless a, a um, banker has like particular engineering experience. Yeah? Uh, um, focus on areas under direct management control and recognize upstream and downstream aspects of the company's activities. And, and if you do that, then as well the question of the performance of the organization level is respectively kind of uh, um, identified. Yeah? Okay, so what, what is the uh, uh, point of all this? Well, ideally, we would use that uh, um, to really be consistent and report uh, um, how our sustainability is doing, right? Uh, um, at project level, at product level, at company level. Yeah? So um, it's about transparency, about the sustainability of the organi organizational activities, is of interest to a diverse range of stakeholders, including business, uh, uh, labor, workers, non-governmental organizations, investors, accountancy, and others. Uh, um, so here it's really uh, reporting eco-efficiency publicly as a, a way to communicate a key element of the corporation's uh, progress or sons on sustainable development to external audiences, including as well investors, insurers, consumers, and other interest groups such as, yeah, I actually had those already, right? Yeah. Have I forgotten the other one? Key, key interest groups is the only new one. Yeah, but uh, uh, yeah. So, but uh, you get the idea. So it's it's kind of an essential thing. Uh, um, you would think that many people are doing it. As a matter of fact, uh, there are not many that actually do report. So uh, um, sustainable uh, sustainability reporting is a practice of measuring, disclosing, and being accountable to internal and external stakeholders for organizational performance towards the goal of sustainable development. So here the sustainability reporting is a broad term considered synonymous with other use to describe the reporting on economic, environmental, and social impact, a triple bottom line corporate responsibility reporting. A sustainability report should provide a balanced and reasonable representation of the, by the way, this is very important, a, reason, uh, wait, 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 uh, a balanced and reasonable representation, right? Not just sell the nicest stuff uh, because you're you kind of uh, raising the wrong ex expectations, uh, or, or as we discovered earlier in the previous lectures, maybe perceived as greenwash uh, if, uh, if it's arbitrary. Yeah. Uh, um, and uh, uh, it's basically reporting then the performance uh, um, of your organization including both positive and negative contributions. Now, if you look through that, either a lot of companies that report this are doing already incredibly well, or they're probably not reporting both. Yeah? And uh, um, yeah, actually, we, we had a case here in, in our university. We, we have a, a um, new professorship of a big oil and gas uh, company that is uh, funding this professor's position to look at sustainability. Now, what, what, is there an issue with this? So first of all, this is actually a big announcement in their report. So uh, um, the company have kind of uh, written in their sustainability report that they are one of the key contributors to advanced science and the current state of knowledge and understanding and sustainability. But is it a problem for the professor that takes a seat? Or is there an issue? Yeah? It is sometimes that you have these committees, like as well for D-norms, that you like you place people there from organizations. For example, I was working in the, in, um, in the elevator industry. So they make security rules for, for uh, like safety. So they use like technologies they already like developed like for years, and this gives them an, an advantage.
advantage before the before the other companies. So they're already like working five years of this, mm -hmm. pressing it into into the norms. So every company actually has to go this way, and they actually have it have a ready made on the hand. So they have a economical bonus on this. That's why they try to place these people as well there in the in this. Okay, so you, you were a lot more sinister there. Yeah? So you, you recognize that uh, um, when it comes to standardization and sustainability still goes through the process, that some companies that may be not so sustainable, they have already technology solutions that they can actually kind of standardize and say like, actually, this is good practice for maybe this industry. And therefore, everybody that uh, um, should uh, go in that industry, this should be seen as an indicator, which often translates in contracts like, you should follow the best uh, available standards, and then you basically see their product there. Yeah, so here the suspicion is that they're actually not engaging for the right reasons in this, but rather to place a kind of already developed technologies in the marketplace. Yeah, so that, that is quite sinister, uh, and uh, um, certainly a possibility. But uh, well, what about the uh, um, professorship that we have? Is it OK that uh, um, this company is funding the professorship? Is it okay that they are saying they are world leader in promoting sustainability if they are doing oil and gas explorations? Yeah, it's yeah, a big question. If you're sponsoring it, then obviously they're going to say they're sponsoring the professorship. Yeah. The, um, the, the moral responsibility lies with the professor to report his true finding. Mm -hmm. Well, from experience, I find out that companies do this. And if the professor, if they don't like what the professor is reporting, mm. they'll just step on the, they'll just, they won't release the reports. So it's like, mm -hmm. it's a professorship, but normally they buy the rights to the, to the report. I mean, Hugo Boss did it. Mm. Hugo Boss sponsored a report on their practice during the World War II. Mm. They didn't like what the researchers found out, so they just said, oh, we're going to pay X, Y, Z amounts of money to charity. But everyone said, okay, what did the report say? No one knows what the report said to you today. They mm -hmm. just said, no, we're going to pay X, Y, Z amounts to charity because they didn't like what the report was saying. Mm -hmm. so okay, think, so you, you think even yeah. more influence, yeah? Yeah, I think they can yeah. influence it, but the moral obligation is on the professor to report the right thing. So you shouldn't go and start saying, oh, this company is good and all of that because they're sponsoring mm -hmm. it. If they're bad, you should say they're bad. Mm -hmm. But well, usually companies, because they're sponsoring it, they kind of find a way to make sure the report doesn't come out if they don't like the finding. Yeah. But if they're sponsoring it, then yeah, they have a right to say, yeah, we're sponsoring this. So you, you're thinking a, a similar lines there again, yeah? So you, you are even like questioning the, the relationship yeah? or, or the independence of this professorship that they are kind yeah, of sponsoring. From experience, again, I don't know, but from experience, there's usually no independence. Mm. They say there is, but it's... Okay, we like what you're writing, we'll publish it. We don't like what you're writing, we're not going to publish it. Mm. From experience, I might be wrong, but... Mm. but so, so this colleague has actually started last year. So we, we have this professorship now here. And uh, um, this was this were our question. So we, we had a similar question. Uh, um, so in the annual report, uh, um, actually this year, they already announced that they are one of the leading companies supporting the research and development in sustainability. And it was seen as a double-edged sword because many people consider oil and gas to not be an industry that is actually sustainable. Yeah, so there, there's that side. But then we, we asked the professor, and, and he said, like, okay, I get two projects normally from this company that are specific to the company. But uh, he's actually publishing everything independently at journals so far, and uh, they have not interfered. So they are actually at the moment just using kind of this position to establish in their report that they are one of the world leading companies. And uh, the professor himself kind of, after a lot of questioning from Alex and me and, and some other colleagues, kind of admitted that, that there is a strong bias. So uh, before you <coughs> go in editing, is, yeah, they, they set an agenda, of course. Yeah. This, this, it's, it's a business, Robert. There's always an agenda. And mm. what I'm saying is, because they're sponsoring, they have a right to use it in their statements or whatsoever because yeah, they are absolutely. paying for it. But yes, there is an agenda. I kind of agree with you. There's, there's always an agenda. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're quite right. Uh, and uh, the professor initially defended this well, as we did the other side. Uh, um, if you have a company-funded uh, um, scholarship, then you don't have to. Uh, you, you can basically buy off your time. You know, you're just doing the responsibility at 20 percent. 
and 80% he can do uh, um, science-wise what he wants. So he can actually do kind of very foundation-based science, which is quite interesting. But again, there, there's both. Yeah? So there was a, a negative fear with that, and uh, probably a little bit too strong influence from corporate side on, on something like that, or over-claiming the good. Yeah? So uh, um, if, it's a, if it's a proper report, it should have both positive and negative. And, and you notice already how how uh, controversial that can become. Yeah. <coughs> now, when when you come to uh, um, the actual uh, re uh, global reporting initiative, which kind of aims at the organization level, uh, um, you, you will see it's a network-based organization that produces a comprehensive sustainability reporting framework that is widely used around the world. So here, the GRI uh, is developed. <coughs> Um, through a consensus seeking, so you have multi-stakeholder process, so there will be some compromise, of course, right? So stakeholders, as we identified, they have their agenda. They will try to uh, um, make sure that they don't stay just in the negative light, right? Uh, um, so participants are drawn from global business, civil society, labor, academic and professional institutions, and the reporting framework sets out the principles and performance indicators that organizations can use to measure and report their economic, environmental, and social performance. So uh, um, actually here you, you see the model as well, how, how they have kind of uh, subdivided it. Yeah? Uh, um, then, the, uh, um, then you have the uh, con cornerstone of the framework is the sustainability reporting guidelines, so uh, which is there in the window. Uh, um, the third version of the guidelines known as the uh, G3 guidelines was published in 2006. Actually, there's a new one uh, um, it's been published in 2015, uh, um, but uh, the model is more or less the same. And it's uh, free to uh, uh, the public, so you can just download it as well if you want to use it as a benchmarking. Companies uh, perform, yeah, so this is an easy MSC dissertation. Uh, this is actually uh, um, easy to measure. Yeah. And a lot of companies are keen to have, of course, a tool like that, yeah? so if you're interested in that. Then uh, um, here we, we had as well kind of, uh, um, oh, this is actually still the GRI, so this is actually sustainability reports based, uh, um, can be as well benchmarked against uh, different stakeholders and organizations. So you can see uh, uh, significance of the organization <coughs> and versus the signific significance to stakeholders, and then you can kind of see the uh, um, level of coverage, what they're actually covering, right? So, uh, um, so this can be in performance with respect to laws, norms, codes, performance standards, and voluntary initiatives uh, demonstrate organizational commitment and uh, to, to sustainable development and compare organizational performance <coughs> over time. So uh, things that would really like hit negatively is, for example, things like what BW had with uh, commissioning and just paying fines and settling it uh, legally, but still being perceived as a uh, um, social impact on a very uh, big scale. And that would be very negative for BW, right? So th this is basically an idea. And you should see that as well in their <coughs> sustainable report. I'm, I'm not sure that it will be there, but I, I will certainly look for it. So. Um, Reports should include sustainability issues of significance to both the organization and stakeholders in general, uh, including the public. So this is as well when uh, maybe social matters are not uh, um, right. So uh, you, you should read as well now us that we, we, we had a light form of, of child labor in this university till last year, right? Until we realized that that was actually happening and then we kind of changed it. Uh? And it's of course not quite the child labor uh, um, that, that people consider uh, in general terms. Yeah. So um, the integrated uh, reporting is part of it. So integrated reporting demonstrates a, a linkage between an organization's strategy, governance, and finance performance, and the social and environmental and economic context within which, the, uh, which they operate. So by reinforcing these connections, integrated reporting can help business to take more sustainable decisions and enable investors and other stakeholders to understand how an organization is really performing. And uh, again, here you have kind of broken it down to strategic focus, uh, connectivity of information, uh, future orientation, <coughs> responsiveness, and stakeholder inclusiveness, and then consciousness, reliability, and modest, is it? Uh, uh, materiality, yeah, sorry, my apologies. Yeah. So th this is kind of the dimensions that they're embracing, right?
So, so far, most common organizational response to reporting on sustainability performance has been to publish a sustainability report either in conjunction with or separately from the company's annual report, so it's not yet uh, integrated. This is an encouraging trend, but several major concerns have emerged. First, sustainability reports are not often integrated with conventional economic reports. This is inconsistent with the holistic nature of sustainability, uh, so economic is as well uh, part of sustainability as is uh, social and environmental. Uh, so, and it represents a backward step from the integrated <coughs> framework of measurement approaches. Uh, so second, these reports tend to focus on the positive partly because they are written for readership of existing or potential customer and employees and investors. So hence I mentioned uh, uh, the sustainability reporting that I have seen is often not doing both and they don't recognize the negative. They are largely using it as a promotion or, or marketing stunt. Yeah. Uh, um, actually, one of the MSC students from last year, we did an analysis of uh, uh, corporate social responsibility reports of uh, um, uh, 200 uh, companies just analyzing kind of pictures and uh, claim patterns versus uh, reportings in the news. And uh, the statistical discrepancy is, is horrendous. Uh, first of all, the majority of photos have nothing to do with the operations that they're using. Uh, so it's not a reporting, it's like a marketing stunt. And it was worse, it came uh, from one consultancy. So that there seems to be a group of consultants that seem to write the reports. Uh, so this is very concerning. Uh, and uh, not, not even to mention uh, not reporting on, on events that kind of were major impacting for them, yeah. But uh, the, the idea really is uh, um, to have a transparent, uh, uh, holistic, and robust and readable uh, um, report, but uh, again, uh, we are still a little bit away from that. Okay, th this was my run through it, oh, again over an hour. Uh, um, so uh, um, we, we cap captured so far uh, uh, sustainability monitoring, right? the evaluation and assessment as well. We know as well the difference, right? Then we had some indicators for sustainability. So we had some kind of generic frameworks of how to measure, yeah, well, what can we actually kind of uh, um, look for as facts. And then we had as well the sustainability reporting, which is kind of encouraged. Yeah? So this is kind of following through the organizational performance as well and the projects that they are running, but as identified, not yet happening too much. If you want a few examples and the indicators, uh, here's again the, yeah, those are the links and, and some reading. Uh, this is light reading, so you will see it's a seven pager and an eight pager, I think. So uh, um, it, it should be uh, um, a good start to actually kind of familiarize with what's involved. Uh, having said so, this is the hardest part. I know that project managers, uh, well, we had this already in the control lecture, it's not a favorite part, yeah? so the reporting and capturing of data, but uh, it, it's a, in a way your bread and butter as well. Yeah? So if you get into this, it will enable you to make better informed decisions. Yeah? Any questions or observations? <coughs> okay, uh, um, as promised, uh, um, the usual 10 minutes break, and as you may have uh, um, uh, uh, a stroll to your coffee or you want to talk with your neighbor, Maybe think already, how do you actually evaluate or measure what's sustainable is in your life? You want to have a little bit of discussion on that point and think about what, what we actually perceive as sustainable, right? So is it actually, sust I told you I, I commute to work, is that sustainable? Yeah? Is, is this already the right movement? So transport, I, I, I use a bike as transport replacement yeah, to my car. But is, is it sustainable? Is this is a question, yeah, but uh, um, aside of that, so the bigger topic is, how do you actually measure what is sustainable? Yeah? Or what do you associate with sustainability and how do you actually look for it? Yeah? Okay, uh, t 10 minutes break, and then we have a little bit of a discussion. Uh, um, and if you have any questions or observations, uh, you just come up to me, I run this way quickly for water, yeah? So we, we start again <coughs> quarter past, yeah?